Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Newsroom Series on Channels Television. I'm Alumide McCauley. Thank you for joining us. Our focus today is the North Central Region. The federal government will, on April the 4th, arraign Binance Holdings Limited and its two top officials, Tigran Gambarian and Fleen Nadim and Jarwala, on allegations bordering on tax evasion. Binance, Mr. Gambarian and Mr. Jarwala, listed as first and third uh, defendants, are expected to be arraigned before Justice Emeka Wite of the Federal High Court of Puja on a four-count charge. Anderwala, who had been in detention alongside Gamburian, was said to have escaped from lawful custody. He did escape on Friday from the Abuja guest house where he and his colleague were detained. Though the Federal High Court Easter vacation, became, vacation became, began on March the 22nd and will come to an end on April the 8th, the Chief Judge, Justice John Soho, directed the transfer of Bannon's case filed to Justice Witte. Although Justice Witte is not, on, is not a vacation judge, the Chief Judge granted the, the fiat for the judge to handle the case during vacation being a matter that concerns dire national interest. Carry notices had been related to the Federal Inland Revenue Service, the prosecuting agency, and counsel to other parties for the defendants to take their plea. And other top stories, Governor Sani offers free education to rescued Kuriga school children under his foundation. The governor promised to rebuild the Leah Primary and Government Secondary School in Kuriga in conjunction to provide other basic infrastructure in the community. Addressing the children before their departure to Kuriga, the governor assured them that the kidnapping incident will not in any way affect their education, stating that adequate security has been provided to Kuriga community to ensure that the incident does not recur and the residents go about their daily lives without fear. The Director Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, is calling on Nigerians, especially residents of Delta and adjoining states, to assist the military with credible information that will help to lead to the arrest of eight persons allegedly responsible for the killing of 17 soldiers in the Kwama community in Delta State. Addressing a news conference on the activities of troops in various theaters of operation, General Buba says the military remains determined to fish out the perpetrators of the heinous act in Delta State. He also announced the release of 313 suspected terrorists on the order of a federal high court in Bornu State due to lack of evidence to convict the suspects. When you look at our armed forces, our armed forces is a force for good. We are deployed across the country for a reason. And that reason is obvious to all, should be obvious to all, for the protection of our citizens and the restoration of peace where there is none. What we do in a situation where the extension is to de-escalate it. And when it has gone out of hand, we contain it to make sure it doesn't spread. So what has happened in Delta must never repeat itself. And it is for that reason that we have put out this banner of eight persons, including a woman, as wanted persons. <laughs> We will do whatever it takes to get these people. If we need to put a bounty on their head, we will do that. And we encourage citizens, particularly those in Delta State, to assist in the investigation by flushing these persons out. Newsgroup's 
continues with North Central Focus Management of the Federal University of Health Sciences, Otoko, in Benue State. And the Ochidoma has called on the federal government to rethink its safe school program with the establishment of mobile police stations around public institutions following the renewed kidnapping of students. The traditional ruler made the call during the visit of the Doma Area Traditional Council to the takeoff site of the Nigeria's of the country's first specialized medical university at Otada, where host community members staged demonstrations with a view to revive community-based security for the institution and staff members. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Innocent Uja, and his team, who welcomed the call for scaling up security at the university, but appealed for the reconstruction of the Otoko Eboyi Interstate Road. This is the prototype design of the College of Medicine and the administration building of the Federal University of Medical Sciences, a specialized medical university located in Akwetakwa, Otoko local government area of Benue. The institution receives a special visitor, the Ochidoma and his council members. The visit comes as activities at the takeoff site in Otada get back on track following last month's demonstration by the host community seeking to revive local security for the institution and staff. The ruler of Idoma Kingdom is here to inspect the project and recommend the best way to handle the matter while seeking help from the federal government's safe school program. Because as a father of the land, we want this university to grow more than this. And we therefore appeal to them to increase anything that they used to give to this university, they can increase it more. So that this development that is going on here they should not be stopped. And they should sustain it to the end. For the security, we appeal to the federal government also to make sure that they can deploy maybe a mobile police station to be stationed in the school here to mitigate any kind of a possible attack from the enemy. He is conducted around the medical and laboratory service areas by the acting chief medical director of the teaching hospital and the management team. They discuss infrastructure, water sanitation and security needs. The hospital is growing at an accelerated pace. Before the advent of the teaching hospital, there was no single consultant practicing in Benue South Senatorial District. As we speak today, we have more than 21 consultants who are working in the teaching hospital. The kidney center is working maximally currently as we speak. The road uh, to the, leading to the permanent site was constructed many, many, many years ago. It requires rehabilitation. You also know that water is a major problem for us in, uh, in Otupo. And so the dam, I am told, is uh, about 70% complete. I uh, will be very happy if the federal government can look into that so that we can have water. You know, water is life. Professor Abad then leads the Ochidoma and his council members into the Senate building and offers the traditional kola knot as His Royal Majesty blesses the items. <laughs> His Royal Majesty formally apologizes to the university and the federal government, a gesture the Vice Chancellor accepts. He uses the opportunity to reiterate the gains of citing the institution in the Doma land. I tend that on reserve apology to the institution for the ugly incident that took place about three or four weeks ago when some of my children demonstrated here. Uh, the economic circumstances of to all here has improved. Even the pan wine that we, we drink, the cost has gone up. Yes, it is the economy because if you, uh, people no longer have a place, our staff do not have houses to rent, it is because of the university. And that is the immediate fallout of the university system. University is for development. Although work has reached an advanced stage at the permanent site, other key infrastructure, such as access roads that connect Otupo to Edboy State, need to be reconstructed to further open up the area to visitors. Meanwhile, the Benue State Governor, Hassanth Alia, says his administration is ready to implement full financial autonomy for the 23 local government areas of the state with a charge to increase internally generated revenue through projects that will help increase food production. The Governor gave the directive while speaking with journalists after the opening ceremony of a workshop for local government caretaker chairmen and workers 
with a mandate to improve the lives of residents. Newly appointed local government caretaker chairman from the 23 councils and their management committee and staff are gathered here for an administrative sensitization work plan. Governor Hyacinth Alia arrives at the venue and pronounces financial autonomy for the third tier of government with a call for improvements in internally generated revenue. I am happy to say that my administration has given its full blessings to the autonomy of our local governments. I want due to the local government to be promptly let me use this medium to appeal to all local governments to intensify efforts towards increasing their internally generated revenues. This is important as a step to boost your capacity to provide for the welfare of your people. The chairman of Conchisha Local Government, while speaking on behalf of the other participants, assures the governor of a quick turnaround of the system. All the chairmen, council members, and local managers who will implement this and put it to practice to have a viable, effective, and a local government that will make you proud. Yes. After the opening ceremony, the special advisor speaks on the preparedness of the administration to grant full autonomy, just as Governor Lea laments the food crisis situation as he plans to step up farm yields and access to road infrastructure. I know that Fadalia have already granted autonomy to the Legislative Council, the Judiciary, and as, when, as soon as possible, that of the local government uh, system is passed by the National Assembly and asserted by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it will be given to them so that the local government works. You can listen to His Excellency. He said that when the local government councils and the local areas work, the state will work. One of the major roads where uh, some fruit are brought from some local government, um, it's been constructed presently. On that road, it cuts across a lot of homes and farmlands, and then a number of orchards. And what I, we are looking for is, at the end of it all, we, are, we even send some farm extension workers to assist those people on the farms. We are looking for further yields of their productivity, so we have to prep them up. Today we are talking about food insecurities. That way should never ever be applied to Beno State because that is our art and that is what we know how to do best. But how come we are also in deficits just like other places because of the other form of insecurity, the social and the civil insecurities we are experiencing now. The idea is to position local government administrators in the state for effective service delivery to return communities to their farmland through key infrastructure investments. The British government has affirmed its commitment to collaborate with the Plata State Government on peace building initiatives and prosperity, as well as willingness to contribute to agricultural development and intelligence gathering initiatives. This commitment was made by the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Richard Montgomery. During his visit to Governor Caleb Mutwang of Plateau State at the Government House in Jos, the Plateau State Government is soliciting for partnership with the British on improving its educational sector, which has been on the downturn. The visit of my cabinet minister, Kevin Bedenok, someone of my Nigerian ancestry, uh, who came as our Secretary of State for Business and Trade, the pleasure of signing with the federal government a new enhanced trade and investment partnership. Uh, so we are very interested to pursue prosperity opportunities. As part of that, the UK has a developing countries trading scheme which has removed tariffs on over 3,000 products. So I'm rather hoping in our discussions about the economy in Plateau that Plateau as an agricultural heartland that has always produced a great deal of uh, products 
uh, diverse products in the agricultural sector as to whether or not there will be opportunities for British companies and indeed Nigerian companies. Now, the governor expressed gratitude for the British government to consider the state amongst beneficiaries of its partnership alongside the federal government with an appeal for special intervention in the state education sector. Before coming back to Nigeria again, there's a lot of historical link between our nations. So it is only appropriate that even though you deal directly with the federal government, that you look at subnationals that have quite a rich history with the British government. Therefore, want to welcome you and to appreciate all the areas you have elaborated that we need to look into further. Uh, one thing I can assure you is that this administration has been doing all it can to ensure that there is peace in the land. Because if there is no peace, there will be no prosperity. Welcome back. Skills acquisition that will meet international standards and best practices which will improve overall quality of services provided by indigenous artisans, thereby reducing dependency on foreign artisans, is the focus of the Industrial Training Fund for the Skill Up Artisans Program. This was unveiled at the design and development of curriculum for the Skill Up Artisans going on at the Industrial Training Fund headquarters in Joss Plateau State, where experts from the sector, Skilled Council are putting their heads together for a standard-based operational procedure for the artisans. The Industrial Training Fund Skill Up Artisans Program is one of the vital schemes designed for upskilling, licensing and empowerment of 5 million Nigerian artisans on a yearly basis. It was set up to improve the skills of artisans in various trades and vocations and provide a comprehensive industry compliance training procedure. One of the main objectives of SUPER is to do a kind of value orientation, work ethics, to ensure that Nigerian artisans are under one umbrella to aggregate all artisanal parties in Nigeria. Two, to regulate artisanal parties in Nigeria. Three, to upskill the artisan such that they can compete locally and internationally. Artisans engaged in carpentry, masonry, plumbing, electrical and automobile works, building and fashion design, among others, are receiving attention at this capacity building event with experts and professionals in the various disciplines taking them through. We did a survey nationwide to know actually the skill deficiencies and what we found out was that the electronics and the electrical aspect of motor vehicles today has been a very big challenge to most of our artisans. And as we speak now, we're talking about auto gas conversion and electric vehicles. So these are challenges on the artisans. The skill up program will actually bring them in tandem with this current development and changes in technologies and times in the auto sector. President of the Plateau State Fashion Designers Association and a member of the Nigeria Institute of Builders share what they believe the artisans stand to benefit from the training. Earlier before now, we've been, um, the fashion industry has been very uh, porous. Anyone can just stay within the confines of their home and just learn a little skill and then they feel they're good to go. That's why we have a lot of substandard um, um, works out there. They are not meeting the international standard. But registering on the super now, I think it's an amazing idea because it's going to bring us under one umbrella and it's going to make us get um, drilled in such a way that we will be good enough to meet international and look uh, compete favorably in the market. No building can stand properly without the use of the artisans that we have in the industry. And we are hoping, just like the Institute, is ensuring that every artisan, both intending and those with prior knowledge registered under this scheme, we are ensuring that we will support this program 
with all our members to ensure that standard is being observed and artisans do what is right in the construction industry. The development of curriculum for the Skill Up Artisans program is aimed at providing the required certification and licensing for artisans to improve their credibility and give reassurance to customers of their skills and expertise on the job. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tarid Lagbaja, says that the Army requires support and cooperation of Nigerians to be able to defeat enemies of the country. He made the comment to a representative of the Nigerian Army Training Center in Tantagora, Niger State, while closing the Fast Bolt 11 exercise of 82 Battalion. The exercise is aimed at providing adaptive and mission-oriented training for counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency in Nigeria. According to the Army Chief, the prolonged fight against insurgency and terrorism has taken a toll on various aspects of the country, including food security, education, and livelihood. This training will also assist the military at the forefront in overcoming war fatigue. I want to emphasize that the Nigerian Army, as the name implies, Nigerian Army, is Army for Nigeria, is staffed from the members of the Nigerian society to defend the territorial integrity of, the integrity of Nigeria. And so, if Nigeria Army will succeed in various theaters of operations across the country, what do we expect from members of the Nigerian society? We expect cooperation from them. We expect information from them. And that is why the Nigerian army carry out as part of its constitutional responsibility, as part of its training activities, also have a department, which they call Civil Military Affairs Department, that interfaces between the Nigerian society and the Nigerian army. And that department is responsible to ensure that we chart a very cordial relationship with the members of the Nigerian society. All we need, if operation is going on in your community, you have to cooperate with us. You have to give us information. Because those causing trouble in our society, they are not spirits. They are not from, from uh, the moon. They are not from the blues. They are from within the community. And members of the community know them. So it, is, it behoves of the members of the community to tell us who are these people perpetrating evil? Policies and legislation that will increase women's participation in governance is critical in Nigeria's socioeconomic landscape because they are mostly at the receiving end of the consequences of bad government and political instability. This is the view of various speakers at the International Women's Day organized by the MICO National Institute of Labor Studies in Lorry where they advocate for compulsory seeding of vice presidency and deputy governorship posts to women as a starting point. Even though women and girls make up nearly half of the country's population, this numeric strength is not represented in governance, either in elected or appointed positions. A case in point is the 2023 general elections, which saw... 14 female members making it into the lower chamber and three in the upper chamber, while in 2019, seven women made it into the Senate, while 11 were elected out of 469 parliamentary seats. It is against this backdrop that the female staff at the Michael Imodu National Institute of Labor Studies marked the International Women's Day celebration with a seminar sensitizing themselves and their women folk on the need for women to vie for political posts. The women were unanimous on the need for more female representation in governance, given the fact that the current numbers are insignificant when compared with their population strength and contribution to economic growth. God has given us power to work in our various places. Even in our organization, let us put in our efforts. Let us make this work. I want to advise women, we should not fold our hands, we should come out to contribute to the development of our nation, Nigeria. Nigeria embraced democracy in 1999. The number of women that have been elected into the state and national assembly are not as much, not even up to half, 
it is quite infinitesimal, the number of women holding political offices. When I talk about ministers, talk about commissioners, talk about women honorable in state and national assembly, they are very, very small. So we need to encourage and danger, create awareness on the need for women to come out, look at themselves, encourage them, come out, and, and vie for political position. For his part, the Director General of the Institute is convinced that Nigeria is ripe for a female vice president or even a female president. But this is a country that has produced the first female senator in 19, as far back as 1983. But it took us another 40 years before we could have additional three or four senators that are women. I think this statistics is not inclusive enough. I think it's not over until we produce the first female governor, the first uh, female vice president, uh, if I indeed the first female president. Beyond the sustained advocacy for increased participation of women in politics, women desirous of leadership positions must show resilience in the face of the odds, which include religious and cultural stereotypes, just to mention a few. Finally, the Nasara state governor, Abdullah Isule, is promising to continue prioritizing the welfare of pensioners in the state. He stated this when he received the state pensioners at the government house in Lafia, the state capital. I think the pensioners in the state, and indeed maybe in other states, have been very, very patient in view of challenges that other governments have had. And I want to sincerely thank you for your patience. We have continued to do our best for you and we will continue to do our best for you. Not because the government is so special, but because you are actually deserving of the best of the government. And that is the reason why we should do it. It is our wish and it's our prayer and we are hopeful that it's not only 2011 we will address. I'm not making any promise. But one thing that I can commit to you is that as the resources become available, it is our wish to pay everybody. That is our prayer. That is our wish. That is what we are going to do. And that's it on Newsroom Series today. Thank you for watching. I'm Alun Demokali.